How's it going? For all is metal here with another album review. I am Necrotic Nick. And I'm Jammin' John. And we have a fresh band for you. This is their first full length. It's a sadistic ritual. They're a thrash metal band from Atlanta, Georgia, and they've been around since 2009. And this came out on Dark Descent Records, which is a pretty solid fucking label for heavy shit. And uh, this is definitely heavy shit. Yes, yes, there's no doubt about that. Very heavy, very thrashy. Again, for bands of Sodom, I heard Testament right off the bat. The Slayer. vocalist sounds like <laughs> Chuck Schuldner from, from Death. So it's uh, definitely thrash. Yeah, straightforward, in your face. A little bit of that kind of death thrash sound, mm-hmm. too, like you would hear with early Sepultura or Possessed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Solid production, like really got kind of an old school feel, but it sounds really clean. Yeah, yeah the drums were definitely on point. The, actually, everything was pretty out front and in your face. Yeah. Even for sounding as, as raw as it did, it still was out there. Kick drum could have come up a bit. Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> Drummers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I mean, another album I, I really dig. This is a good first effort for a band, too, in terms of a full length. They have EPs and I think a live album and a couple compilation appearances. But pretty solid go. Uh, right away, they established themselves. Uh, the intro I thought was good on the opening track. Uh, it was very reminiscent. It had the backwards speech, which is almost kind of reminiscent mm-hmm. of Hell Awaits, which was a good nod. Straightforward, right to your fucking face. And I was surprised about how much they use blast beats on this. Like, blast beats, they pop up and crash. But not as much. They really kind of labored that death metal close relation. Like, we're not quite death metal, but we're a little more than thrash. They had some moments. There were some definite uh, death metal moments, for sure. They never really let up on the gas no. at all. No. It was very just nonstop. Oh, yeah. Like, just when you thought they were going to let up, like, they tease you with a little groovy moment. Like, no, right back to that fucking blast. Which is cool, mm-hmm. but... One of the issues that came up listening to this album was, unfortunately, when you've listened to half this album, you almost listen to pretty much everything they have in their wheelhouse, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then after that it starts getting repetitive, save the last track, which was pretty much, I think, a microcosm of the entire album. Like They yes. demonstrated yes. every good thing well, they did. Well, because do. The, the, the songs, for the most part, actually, what, there's, so there's, what, ten songs on the album? Nine of those songs were pretty, like, two and a half, three minute songs. And then the last track was, what, eight minutes and some change, maybe? So, again, yeah. Actually, they could have... I think they threw everything they had in the last song to kind of just give an overview of the entire album. Oh, with a couple more elements. In fact, it was my favorite track. It was my favorite track, To be honest, so... I mean, there were other tracks I thought that stood out. I I liked In Cold Blood. It kind of had a... Like, it opened up with a very punky riff, very reminiscent of Overkill, which Overkill loves to remind us that they love punk and every single album. Yep. I liked uh, Merciless Retribution, uh, which I believe was the ninth song. It had some death metal moments. It had some groove moments. In fact, in my opinion, one of the first hooks to really catch on to differentiate the songs. Yep. Which was one of my problems. There weren't a lot of differentiator moments. Yeah. Um, r- really, really, I-, I think they could have made the first eight songs into one track. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Like, there just, there wasn't enough like moments where you could just sit back and have a good head banging moment. Yeah, they were just laboring on that speed, which is awesome. They did it very well. Again, but, I have nothing against the musicianship yeah. on this album. Yeah, it, it, but it, it just got to be too much at a certain point. It's like, okay, I want to hear just a little bit more. A lot of the best thrash albums, even if they're going full bore, like Rain and Blood, one of my personal favorites. There's enough moments in those super fast songs to differentiate one another. Yes, these kind of blended together. Save. A handful of tracks that I thought were really good. I like Death Shriek, the shortest track on there, easily. Yeah, it was it only have, probably what a minute and a half or yeah, something. By the half. time I got into it, it was over. So. Yeah, and it has that kind of uh, if you're familiar with Toxic Holocaust, that short, stripped down, very raw thrash. Mm-hmm. It was really good. It was a nice kind of break. Yeah, I thought the solo on it was kind of unnecessary because you have a minute and a half track and you just did a quick dive bomb. I was like, eh, did it really add anything? It could have just been this nice little raw song that stood out. I thought there were some other good standouts on here, but they didn't stand out enough. That was my main issue. Yep. You know, a couple more, more like more moments of like chuggy, groovy moments. I think, like, and space them out in between these faster songs. Because yeah, I, I, again, yeah. something to latch onto. You know, 
would have liked to have seen that more. Yeah. I would have liked to have said, oh, yeah, I definitely am going to remember this song based on the, you know, dun 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 dun. But it didn't really happen. Yeah. So. That was like, and I love barn burners. I fucking. I do too. I, I love I, the fastest fucking shit possible. Even even in death metal, I just yeah. love great barn burners. Just, just, just keep going. But I like seeing those moments broken up because when those moments come back, those fucking barn burners, you yeah. appreciate them that much yeah. more. Yeah. So. You know, they're still a young band. They've only been around for ten years. You know, and, they've only, and this is only their first full length. So, so this, I mean, this band's how, grow. how much can you cut your teeth with a couple of EPs and then wait a bunch of years and then release an album? Yeah, it's it's a good place to start. I just would like to see it become a more elemental thing, not so much in just riff after riff after riff after riff, but finding something to separate yeah. riff after riff after riff to make songs stand out. Again. Nothing against the musicianship of this album. I, I no think the drummer was either. spot on. Their guitar players were were really throwing it out there. I don't want to thrash a band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, shame on you. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not. No, you're not. I'm really not. All in all, I'll give this album three stars. I think it's a solid offering. If a little, you know, a little repetitive, it's still solid thrash. And if you like yeah. thrash, definitely check it out. I'm going to give it three stars because, uh, you know, for me, it's based on the musicianship at this point in the game. It's the, They were good. They were really good musicians. I'd be curious to see them live. Yes. I'd like to see them barn burn at that rate for ten songs. You yeah, know? That, that would be That'd fun. That'd be fun. pretty neat. Um, and again, a, a great first offering, and I'm curious to see what they have next. So I'm going to give you three stars. All right, well, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, sub. We do shit like this all the all time. The time. Catch you later. Later.